Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Geek Home World. I'm Ed Susevich with my sexy voice, and uh, I'm hitting that 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 deep voice there. Actually, I can go higher. <laughs> I want to go higher. Anyway, um, welcome to the Geek Home World. We've got a, about eleven films to talk about, and joining me once again is the unrivaled, unmatched, unparalleled. Yeah, that's right. Person. Keep going. I ran out of uns. Don't stop. Don't stop. Yet. Um <laughs> Scott Schreiber is joining me again here in yeah, yeah. the studio. Thanks for having me back. Thank you for coming back. I'm I'm gonna do the deep voice because the whole I time. like it. Yeah. Maybe. Why not? And uh, like I say on the um I do it on my radio show. Ooh. We are recording at night, but we usually don't do that, so we've got to we don't record at night. <laughs> what happens after late hours? I don't know. You know I, can, I can get real deep with my voice. It's very deep. Anyway, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, this is a great intro here. To I don't. I we're don't gonna talk care. about some more films here. Our last podcast, we did a, you know a big group of films, and you know it's a, the busy time of year. We've got about ten, eleven. It's Oscar season. It or... is indeed. So we've got some, you know, some. Most of these films have, are pretty good. There's a couple in there that maybe not so much, but you know, it's uh, it's, it is the best time and. <laughs> and, and I want to call spoiler alerts here because yeah, we are gonna. I'm not one to spoil movies, <laughs> and so I certainly don't want to but upset we, anyone by I, spoiling anything. So, but we are going to be talking in full, right? Yes, we okay, are. So, so, spoiler alert: if you have not seen some of the films on here, just you know, hit pause, come back later, and or whatever, and listen. And yeah, or try to jump to the next one, or, or jump to the next. <laughs> yeah, try. Yeah. <laughs> you you will try, anyway. or just to uh, listen to us and you know and 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 take it in because uh, we're we know what we're talking about. Yeah, we we're <laughs> professionals. We've been doing this a long time. <laughs> Too long. We were doing this when your grandfather was in diapers. I don't. That's a Star I, Trek reference. Oh, right. okay. <laughs> Over my. <laughs> Can you tell I've had caffeine? All right. Um, All so right. First we're going to start with um, possibly the number one film of the year. Uh, we haven't done our our top ten. Which oh, ooh, preview. We're going to be once we we decided once we get into the twenty twenty the um and we can see things perfectly right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have our top. Our top films of 2019. We got to see them all. Make sure we get them all in. Exactly. There's still and a few more to go that haven't come out yet. Yeah. yeah, it's December what? When I'm recording this, the it's 4th. December fourth, 2019. Mm-hmm. So we're coming at you with that. But uh, we're gonna during 2020, we're gonna start releasing the episodes. We've we're back to the 70s at this point, right? Yeah, we're gonna we're working on a top 10 of each decade, and we're gonna go right. you know go back as far yeah. as uh, I believe the 20s or 30s, and we'll, right. so those should be some good shows where we talk about our favorites of, of each decade. And uh, you know, we've had a hundred hundred great years of film, so why not do that? Why not <laughs> celebrate it? And so. Yeah. You'll get to find out, and you, you can certainly interact with us on Twitter at Geek Home World or on the podcast at geekhomeworld.libson.com, and we're everywhere, iTunes, we're all over the place, but um, you can let us know if you agree with our list or not. And uh, But anyway, we're starting off with, um, we're kind of getting caught up on some movies because we both got down here in Savannah, you get the thing called the Savannah crud when one day it's 80 degrees and the next day it's 30 <laughs> degrees. And then the next day it's 60 degrees. And the next day, you know, mother nature is off her meds sometimes. And, um, it happens that way. And so I, I was down for a couple of weeks. I didn't see anything. And then you were, you were still powering through, you, I'm got sick s- too. you know, steadily going through. I think, uh, tonight we're going to cover, I think about the last two or three weeks of right. new films. So, so spoilers, uh, ahead. 
beware. The first one could be possibly, and, and I'm struggling as I'm, we're putting our list together. Yeah, right now it's kind of hard to set it in stone, but right. uh, the lists are fluid. But uh, I think for me right now, Jojo Rabbit um, yes. is the best film of the year for me. Um, there's some other contenders there. There are, and, and there's one coming up. Um, it's going to be number seven and, on our list as a contender. Yeah, right. and so we, uh, you know, on our last podcast, we did talk a little bit about Jojo Rabbit because I had right. seen it, but now you've had the chance to see it. So what did you think? Taika Watiti. <laughs> did I get it right? Close. Close enough. Well, that's that's yeah. that's how he says it. I'm saying it in the native tongue. Okay, that's why. Good. Good. Um, okay. So um, <laughs> I, I was worried. Um, good old Catholic boy going in to see a film about Hitler and and, <laughs> and Hitler and, youth. And, and, and I'm Holocaust. told it's a comedy. And I'm like, when I first saw the previews and you told me about it and I saw the previews and I'm like, this is going to be dumb. I, don't, I think this is just going to miss the mark. It's just going to be terrible. I was completely wrong. I went in and saw it, and fabulous film. The funniest film I think I see, I saw in 2019. Yeah, you're is laughing Jojo the, the whole way. I am yeah. laughing, and and it's not and it's not stupid laughter, or stupid jokes or gags. It's no, it's really clever. It's yeah. well written, and um, it's possibly it's either my at this point, and I, I've I'm not done my list, but it's either my number one, number two, or number three film of the year. Yeah, and, and it's and, very worthy. Yeah, and it's very worthy. Uh, Jojo Rabbit. I just we're blown away. My wife loved it. She wanted to go see it again. We haven't had a chance to go see it again, and I certainly would like to see it again. Um, I think it's a crowning achievement. And we we talked, and we may have talked in a previous episode. I think I mentioned that, you know, in 2008, when we were looking back through the decades and, and doing mm-hmm. our, our, our putting our list together, we got to around 2008. And we realized from 2008 to the present, yeah. so 2008 to 2010 and 2010 to 2020, there haven't been as many comedies standout comedies standout comedies yeah. there's been well, comedies but... and or even comedy like less comedies are being produced i think the superheroes right. kill the Man comedies came and yeah and the superhero the marvel universe and not it's not blaming anybody but it's just the trend in movies and yeah. um i'm not complaining at all but yeah we you know we don't have a lot of comedies out there and um it, it, think about it in the early 2000s um we had um, what nine eleven happened, and we had co- we had even more comedies in, in a serious time. Maybe we needed yeah. to laugh, you know. Once we, as a nation, at least here in the U.S., you know, got our bearings, and but that's another story. And uh, but that was just an interesting interesting observation we came across. And Jojo Rabbit was just so refreshing. It was so fun, and and it's a horrible time. Everything that happened, you know, and. Um, you you were Jewish, so I, I was yes, sir. worried how you, you you would you know, and I'm Catholic, and I'm like I don't know how we're gonna take this, and how's this film gonna come across, and it, none of that matters. No, when you go into it with the mindset that it that it is a satire, you know, it, it reminds it's okay me to laugh. It feels Mel Brooksy, absolutely, you know, yeah. in that vibe of things. But Jojo Rabbit, just a complete winner, very original, very um, Oscar worthy. For yeah. something, and it's so tough to to balance the tone needed for this. You, you're exactly this, the film is set during the Holocaust, so satire during the Holocaust. Yeah, doesn't seem like it's gonna work, but wow, does it? Like, and Taika Waititi plays the imaginary friend who is Hitler, which yeah, so <laughs> to to the young boy who's the lead in this. He right writes it, directs it, and plays Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> and does a good job, a convincing job of, he, of that. He really does. <laughs> and uh, and so... Uh, and Scarlett Johansson's great. Uh, yes. Thomason McKenzie, I believe, is the name of the young girl. Um, and, the yeah. young Jewish girl. And, yeah, and there's some things, because they poke fun in that, like when she's coming out of the, the little crawlway oh, space so there, great. and her hands come around, her fingers come around, and you're like, like it's ah, a like horror, it's a horror film. film. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but my, almost my favorite, and you'll have to help me if, if you know his name, but the little kid with the round glass is his friend. Oh, his buddy. No, I don't know his name, oh, my but gosh. he was great, yeah. He, I'm telling you, it's Oscar worthy for comedy or supporting actor or whatever. He should get a nomination. That kid. It was just 
his part is so well written. It's so in, intricate to yeah. um, oh, and, balancing and, and things. Sam Rockwell, like I, I think we, yes. I forgot about Sam Rockwell the first time we talked about it, but he's he's hilarious in it too. Yeah, yeah, all, all around a great cast, a funny, funny film. If you want a film that you can laugh at and, and not feel guilty about, <laughs> and and poignant at the same time. There's several moments, and especially very with good, the with good, the yeah. ending, and that and that's you know I think that's the big draw from this film. Oh, I was I was you know I laughed 99 percent of the time, and there was one percent where I'm kind of crying. So yes, there's a, know, there's at least one devastating moment. Yeah, and, you know, and and but it's done so well, like. Uh, YTD set the shot up. He does this same shot with the, with uh, Scarlett, the mom's Scarlett Johansson's character, mm-hmm. and her shoes. You know, at being eye level with the kid, and you see it once, then you see it twice, and then unfortunately, the third time is a heartbreaking moment where you right. see it. But and um, it's so well done. And that yeah, scene he, in the square there, I was like, oh dear. And, so, uh, so yeah, I'm yeah. I'm rooting for this to be get a pe- best picture nominee or nomination comedies tend to not get best picture nominations so i don't know maybe this can break the mold yeah and um there's n- there's not enough time to say how great jojo rabbit is so um let's move on to a, a lesser film that i wanted to see it because stellar talent in it uh the good liar the good liar ian mckellen and Hel- helen mirren you know on those two alone it, it just screams like oh this could be oscar right. worthy and and it well, uh, it didn't didn't quite deliver, did it? It didn't. It didn't. I mean, there were twists in it, but it it almost twisted too conveniently. And it was a predictable twist. I felt right, too. right, and like I saw it coming the whole way. It's, like it's yeah, you know, it it was a little too but like, who convenient. Really too easy. plans that well? I mean, I yeah. guess if you had fifty years to, yeah. you know, I just felt like. It almost felt like two separate films all together. Yeah, and, and they did. They go down this road where you think he's just, he was you know a war criminal. You think he's a Nazi the whole time. Right. And definitely build that up. But then, yes, he was. But it's more about uh, an act of abuse that happens. Right, and, and, and so that's a little obviously. And timely, she gets her but, revenge. Helen Mirren's character, and um, yeah. but, but it was just a, all a little too elaborate. easy. Well, it wasn't. In some ways, it was too easy. But in other ways, what she planned, you would have had to had about twenty, thirty good years of planning yeah. to to line everything up perfectly. Yeah. Like like it, it was just too convenient of a, a for me. Right. Yeah. And I I think the to be so intricate. The 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 good part about this is watching McKellen and Mirren play oh, off each other. So that is the, the the best part of it. And really the draw, if you want to, if you want to see it, it is fun to see them, you know, in scenes together. So yeah. Know. Good liar. Yeah. Not, not a big box office thing. It's, I think it's probably already gone at this point, but I wanted to see it all year. And so yeah. I'm glad um, we've got an episode here on, on the podcast. Um, and uh, we, 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 went through like a hundred films, like previewing everything that was coming. Oh yeah. At the beginning of the year. Yeah. And so, um, that was one of the ones that was on there and, you know, just the star power alone, I thought it would be had potential, but it just wasn't, it, it's not top 10 for the year, obviously. No, no, but not, not, not even close, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, the next one, which I, I don't believe you saw, um, I did. Right. It's also under, de- uh, you know, underperformed, under delivered, for, under delivered. Am I making stuff up? Yeah, no, that's, it's, <laughs> I think that's a legitimate word. It is, if, uh, it, if it is, you know, it, it, is did, it didn't deliver as well. It was uh, 21 Bridges, and right. that was the Chadwick Boseman cop drama. It was the heist, heist by film. the Russo brothers. Correct, who did Endgame and yeah. Infinity War. And mm-hmm. so, you know, and it did have, the, you could tell in the lighting and the cinematography that it did have that kind of, it had almost, there were scenes where it had this Marvel sheen to it. Really? Yeah. So it kind of looked like it, but for me, it didn't, it kind of just felt like, okay, I could have seen, I could have seen that, uh, I could have seen that storyline or that, that arc on like right. a TV show, a procedure, like on Chicago PD. I saw, you know, <laughs> you could have seen so, it you know, they did raise interesting questions about, you know, cops and intent to shoot and using, and, you know, discharging their weapons. So there was that layer to it, right? but it just, it just didn't deliver a strong enough, you know, message. The performances were so, so Taylor Kitsch plays the bad guy and he's, he's okay in it. But 
you know, he, it just didn't, didn't live up to what it could be. And, and it was actually a film that I felt like it kept getting pushed back. It's release date too. So there probably were issues, you know, yeah. with it and getting the right story and it, it just didn't flow well. And unfortunately for Chadwick Boseman, he couldn't follow up Black Panther with the, with the stud. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, that leads us to our next film, um, fourth on our list. Um, no particular order of importance. No, just, just kind of you know, chronologically and how we saw them. Um, yeah. Ford versus Ferrari. And I still, that's that's one of the ones that I missed that I want to see before it goes. And yeah. everybody's talking about this film and Oscar talk. And, and I could see that. Like Christian Bale and Matt Damon both give excellent performances. Bale, I mean, he does he does his normal yeah. thing what you know whenever he's in a film you're talking oscar damon i do feel like this is his best performance since the departed um he he definitely does a great job and and holds his own with bale right um and it's the story is great because it's about how it's set in the i believe the 60s and it's sure. about how yeah. you know there's there's ingenuity mm-hmm. you know these these um, people are using their brains instead of computers. computers. You know, like try yeah, in the trailer. And this one of those films, they promoted it so much. I was like, I wish the film would get here. I'm tired of seeing the yeah. same trailer. And, yeah. uh, and then they had like the computer in there and they ripped the computer out and right. they put the little pieces of paper on yeah, there. The did wool, the wind tunnel. Yeah, the wool on the yeah. car. Yeah. And then, and it made it faster. And, um, but yeah, everything I heard about this, you know, when I, when it first it was filmed in this area in Savannah. Yeah, parts of it were, parts and it that's were. actually the brilliance of this film. And I won't be surprised to uh, actually, I will be surprised if it's not nominated for editing, because especially with the Le Mans, like they do the mm-hmm. twenty four hours of Le Mans, mm-hmm. but they film that race in like four separate locations, so they had to put you know film you know some of it here, right, and, and then, then go to Georgia, then go to L A or wherever, and. So, and to make it that continuity work, um, pretty amazing job for them to be able to piece yeah. that together. So, so a definite must see for me. I haven't got there and I will get to it. Uh, next on the list we have, uh, which it's already around 800 million worldwide box office in like 10, 12 days. Um, Frozen 2. Mm-hmm. Apparently there's a market for for <laughs> this film, and it's more who mature. Knew? It's a little bit... <laughs> yeah, yeah, who knew? Who knew? I, um, I mean, the, the first one was somewhat successful, I think. <laughs> Disney's ninth... It's going to be their ninth billion-dollar film this year alone, yeah, wow. and if Rise of Skywalker ends up making a billion, if it's really taken well by the fans, mm-hmm. received well, um, it could be the tenth billion-dollar yeah. Which and is I, unheard of. I'm really pleased to see this Frozen 2 do well because it's actually just outside my top 10. I thought they did an amazing job capturing the feel of the first one. Mm-hmm. But they also took the the stereotypical like characters and right. turned turned it uh, turned it on its head. Like the uh there's a moment where uh, I can't remember his name, um, but the the guy that's with Anna, you know, yeah. um he comes and you know, quote unquote, saves her, but he doesn't save her. It he comes. She to, doesn't need saving by a man, right? Well, basically, that's <laughs> the, the idea. And in, but instead of like, it does feel like a moment where he's swooping in. But when he does come in, the first thing he says is, "I'm here. What do you need?" Okay. So he's not saving her. her. He's helping her. He's so, and then there's also, he's portrayed as a sensitive man. He has a love ballad, ballad and it's like an eighties power, power ballad that you I would heard, appreciate. I heard about that. Yeah. Lost uh, in the woods. And, and okay. Now I know what it is. Um, yeah. That's the name. But um, I heard that it's, it's really done well. Cause it yeah. could go something like that could really cheese up the movie and slow it yeah. down. And, and, I will say that it it is it is a little darker than the original. It yeah. deals with death a little more. But but like the uh, the core audience of that has grown up, you right. know. And I think it's smart. The filmmakers right. were smart too. And and the one the account. one song into the unknown is probably going to be the Oscar song. Is um, it as catchy as Let It Go? No, it nothing go. is quite no. as catchy as I Let know. It Go. But it but. is it is sang by Adina Menzel um, or what? How how did Travolta pronounce it at the Oscars? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna say but, exactly. Yeah. So, but uh, no, that song's probably gonna be the Oscar one. But 
I think Lost in the Woods, the power ballad, could could possibly get one. And there's a third one that's the the next right thing, is also a great song in there because it's talking about no matter how you feel, you need to, you know, to push past the grief, push past the negativity, and do the next right thing. And it's a great message for how to, you know, deal with grief. And, you know, unfortunately, I do feel like a lot of Disney movies think everybody has dead parents, but, um, well, if you look at the motif, uh, I was talking, I was on set, um, uh, doing some background acting yesterday and, uh, talking with, with some fellow background actors and trying something new and, um, had a great time. And, um, we were talking about, oh, my brain, what did you just say? My brain just stopped. I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> so the, there was a tangent i went out on that branch and then they fell off the branch of my yeah thought. that's all right i was talking about the the grief and dealing with that and moving past that but uh, um it may not be that important and it was can, related to that uh, wow well, it's okay is, it's been a long day right you were is, on no you were on set i was on set yeah i know but i was trying to think what the purpose of saying that okay because we were talking about something you just said <laughs> that's okay so, i don't know it's um, obviously not that important and we can move on move on to another great film it's that... going to come back to me and i'm going to mention it no it's cool yeah, yeah i'm sure it's that's how it works <laughs> yeah that's how my brain works uh, barely um probably definitely in my top five films um yeah. At some points, I could call it my number one film. At some points, my number two, my number three. I don't, I don't, hadn't done my list yet, but the next one we're talking about is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, the Correct. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers story. Yeah. Tom Hanks, it, and you, you'll explain in just a second why he, he wouldn't get nominated for lead actor, why he would get a uh, supporting actor. Um, but I love this film. I, it was if you grew up with Mr. Rogers as I did, yeah. you know the opening how they did the, the coming into the scenes and you, you know showing the little village and yeah. and all that. I, I loved all that. And they really captured that that set perfectly. It, yes, it, it looked it. exactly like it. It and they the way they start the sh- the film too is in a four by three format instead of your now, you know, 16 by nine. Yeah. So they did it like it was the TV show in the 70s, and then 80s. I think whenever. it expands to the normal. It goes back and yeah, forth, back which and is forth. a cool little, a cool thing. The director, right. Mariel Heller did. And I really liked that where she, and then she used the models, you know, like the trains exactly. and, and, and everything. Uh, so, you know, they're hitting all those nostalgia buttons and, yeah. you know, and, uh, you and I were talking, uh, we went and picked up some food on the way back to the studio here to record. And, uh, I was putting my jacket up in in the closet and I said, it's a beautiful, I was starting to sing the song and and you were saying, what were you saying about growing up? What that reminds you? Yeah. I mean, I think that that whole process of coming home, changing shoes, putting on the card again, it kind of influenced how I came home as a kid too. I mean, my mom always like encouraged us to change out of our school clothes clothes. into the play Play clothes. clothes. Yeah. And so, so, and it was just kind of a ritual that I think is connected to seeing this show. And it's just like a, you know, it, it, it it makes you feel like you're home. It it does. I mean, your heart is just all warm inside when you see it. And, and Fred Rogers was really a genuine guy. He really, he had a deep faith, but he loved everybody unconditionally. And he, he, looked at people's uniqueness and he appreciated them for what they were not, you know, not what they became or or whatever. And he did, he talked about things and he always had the kids, his audience in mind. And, and this film brilliantly portrays that and shows how Fred Rogers, uh, Mr. Rogers always, kept the kids at the forefront and he's like, you know, death yes. kids wonder about these hard subjects. Right. And his mission, talk about, his mission know? was to give kids specifically, I mean, but this works for everybody. It's universal. Yes. But for him, his mission was to show kids ways of dealing with negative thoughts and grief positive ways, in yeah. positive ways. And that was what I really liked. They, that, the documentary that came out a couple of years ago, that was the main message of that. Yeah, and so, that was brilliant. Yes, and, and so the, the filmmaker, uh, Mary Heller again, she really did and take that same theme 
and put it into this film, and it, it and it really is all about that. It's about that Matthew Reese is the lead, and right. because he's the reporter that that is given the assignment. There's a train in the background. That's the little Perfect. train. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, that's but yeah, awesome. So yeah, it follows the reporter who's given the assignment to interview Mr. Rogers as a hero, and he didn't want to. Yeah, it was going to be a little fluff piece, right? Because you know, he and, was the expose guy. You yeah, know? and he's like, "Why are you giving me this?" You know, he's. Yeah, and people would make fun of Mr. Rogers because he was so wholesome and he was so just genuine. But. Right. And the reporter, like, he has a lot of repressed feelings. He has anger towards his father. father yeah. And so, so really, it that's like a what, Marvel film. <laughs> so that's really what this story is about and how Mr. Rogers helps him cope and move on and grow. Right. And it's done so well. And that's why Hanks is supporting here because it's really the reporter's story. Yeah. But. If he doesn't get a nomination for for his performance, Tom Hanks, yeah, he, yeah, oh, he deserves it. You know, I he's, think he's the front runner for yeah, supporting. Yeah. yeah, I think he should. That should be a walk in the park. Yeah. So to I mean, speak, there's some know. other performances that might give him a run for the money. Maybe he, maybe because he's won two Oscars already, that knocks him down. Who knows? But I feel like he has to be. He encapsulated. He had the movements, the hand gestures, everything. His just his. There's whole even demeanor. a rumor going around that he's actually related to Fred Rogers. Well, there. Yeah, I, I saw something like that where, not. yeah, like he he actually did learn that he's you know distant relation to him. So, you know, which but is funny because that happened like with who was it? Larry David and Bernie Sanders. Oh my gosh! <laughs> but yes. anyway, that is a side <laughs> note. But and, but uh, yeah, like neighborhood, and I loved. You know, the fa- the way it ends, too, and, you know, obviously, spoiler alert, but it's really not that much of a spoiler. You know, he, Ro- Mr. Rogers, you know, the, in here, he talks about how to deal with your negative en- energy and your negative emotions, and he says something about banging on the keys. You can hit the keys like, boom. Right, boom. to get that those emotions out. And we there's a beautiful s- yeah. moment at the end. The very end, yeah. Where he's playing, he's just by, him by himself. He's on the set and the lights are coming, going low. So you know it's the yeah. end of the movie. And he's playing this beautiful melody. And all of a sudden he stops and then bangs Dang. the computer, or computer, computer. <laughs> the, the piano. And so at that moment he had a dark moment. Right. Just all of a sudden. And that's, and that's the... And that was the that for me that was the application of what he said someone like a child right. could do or something exactly. as, an ex, as just one of many examples like you could go swimming you can do this you can do that you can um, you know all these creative ways to get your anger out positively right and kids today need to hear yes. that message and it's, once he does that he moves back into the melody the beautiful melody yes yeah. yeah. so it's just like he was he that's literally. It's like words in action, yeah. and, and that's the action that it was that he did there, and it was just a beautiful, you know, ending to the film. And so, yeah, I can't say enough about this film. This, I, the, I, I was tearing up. I was, you know, nostalgic. I had my those big nostalgic goggles of mine. I was wearing those <laughs> proudly, and yeah. um, I love this film. And he so encapsulates the spirit of it, and yeah. and and he makes a Mr. Rogers relevant to today and, and right. Because we, we don't need some kindness in the world. We and, do. It's if you think about it, kids don't have, or I don't think they do. They don't have this positive influence like right. him. And kids are, are, are more prone to be, you know, put childish things away at, at, at an earlier age. You know, they've got their, tablets and their whatevers and they're streaming this and watching this and seeing content they shouldn't see and they're on you know the internet and other places and social media and you know growing up we didn't have all that you know we and we had someone like mr rogers you know that that kids don't have the nuclear family as it was and there's a lot of broken homes and a lot of broken people out there and those broken kids grow up to be broken adults who raise broken kids. And and at some point, I think it, it's important that, that you know, we wouldn't have all the, the social issues, a lot of them, if we had someone who's positive like, like this. So I know I'm droning on, but I can't say enough good about Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood with Tom Hanks. And 
Yeah, I, I, I don't be surprised to see it up for a bunch of Oscars. Yeah. Um, the next film on our list, I finally got to see. You got to see it at the SCAD Film Festival. Correct, yes. And you told me I'd have to do a lot of reading, and that's not my favorite <laughs> thing. But uh, I don't mind reading my films, um, especially when they're of the caliber of this film. And this film could, this is the film I was talking about on the list that we've already mentioned, Jojo Rabbit, could be my my favorite of the year. Um, for 2019, but Parasite could easily be number one. Also, yeah, absolutely, it's no, it's up, it's right up so there with Jojo original. Uh, I, I, you know, I didn't, I, I, they did such a great job. I'm trying to get my words together. They did such a great job telling the story, right? And it moved at such a, a good pace. The pacing is great. It's perfect. It's just not like. The movie we just that we'll talk about later that we literally just got out of that I thought had terrible pacing and but we'll talk about that later. But um, Parasite just did it perfectly and 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 I was in I there was a whole extra level to that story of Parasite, yeah. this family and yeah it you really feel for this family and they're brutal but you know um, I thought it was going to be a gore fest and there was a little bit of gore in it but it wasn't it's it really wasn't. only one scene and that it has horror elements it's more right. of a comedy more than anything like you're well, I, that's that's what I struggled with at first because I'm like okay it's not really a comedy as much I mean I took them serious but there were moments that were funny and and I get that mm-hmm. and it was just but it was perfectly woven together it was just right. beautiful right it really it takes off and you're on board right away it moves quickly you know the the son kind of blackmail oh, it's blackmail not blackmail but he kind of you know works his way into the working for this right, family a, and then he he kind of his friend and he, then he gets his he, sister on board he cons him cons them to bring in his sister then cons them to bring in the dad then cons them to bring in the mom and and then yeah. they kind of take over the house and the beauty of this film is like it really does it, it's about the haves and the haves nots and so like this rich family they kind of kind of work their way into this house and right. you know try to take over and just brilliant about like the there's a little great symbolism like the the house the the rich family's house you have to walk up steps and go up yes to get to the you know into their home with this the main family you go downstairs and they're basically living underground <laughs> a, a little parallel that we've mentioned before is the steps in joker yeah. You know where he's he's always having to go up those steps as yeah. Arthur Fleck. That, that's more symbolic and, of his struggle, right? Yeah, of his yeah, struggle, yeah. and when he comes down the steps, he's yeah. he's dancing and all that. So, yeah, yeah kind of similar. But yeah, Parasite, um, the twisted, the whole family that was the the, the lady who had worked there forever, the housekeeper, yeah. she ends up having her husband in this bunker because this is even South further Korea, underground, even further underground, <laughs> and. Um, did not even I didn't see that coming, and I'm like, oh my god! No, gosh, not at all. And that's the beauty about it. this script too. This it, it, and it, I don't know. I don't have the numbers in front of me what the budget was on this, but it, it didn't have to use special effects or, or high no. special effects. No, and the cinematography is great. The, it's wonderful, and, and they were the able production to, design. I mean, just, yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And they were living. You felt like like when they sprayed down there at like ground yeah. level, and the people were <laughs> it's outside. Like free, free fumigation. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 you know, you felt for this family. And then later on, when they their home gets it's raining and flooded, it gets which flooded. is another symbolic moment with right. with water and everything. Yeah, so you know, they're either got their heads above water, or below it, you know, figuratively and almost literally. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there are so many great things about this film, and I'm so glad you know it, it showed up in our local theaters here and we're a pretty big city you know but with one chain of theaters amc we only get so many films and so you gotta go see them certain ones you gotta go see them before they disappear because you know right now there's so many films coming out there's yeah. not enough theater space for them all mm-hmm. and um i'm so glad I, I i took your wise um uh words and went and watched and i went and watched it with the wife and and yeah. we we loved it and and uh and i mean it's definitely a shoe in for best foreign film but i really want to see it in best picture i do um if it won i would not be upset at all right and there was the all the hype last year of roma being a foreign film that might actually win best picture i think parasite is an even better contender yeah and so let's see if it gets the nomination let's hope so it I, deserves I, I it. definitely think bong joon ho the director 
I think he's kind of a lock for best director. If it doesn't get like a lock for a nomination, not right. necessarily a win, that's you know yet to be seen. But if it doesn't get a best picture nomination, I think he's a lock for director nomination. But I feel like, and I mean this in the best possible way, um, that this felt like the best student made film ever you know it had a higher production than that don't get me wrong i'm not saying it was like a student film per se but it felt like you know they didn't like i said they didn't have to go super high budget 100 million and special effects and stuff like that and they told a story they just did it very well and they the twist and the turns i didn't see coming and i loved it it was just a thrill ride the whole way through and it and you're right it was funny and, and at times I felt weird about it being funny. And then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm getting it, you know, mm-hmm. but I, it, one of the things that we thought could hamper it or some, some said could hamper it is the fact that American audiences don't want to read their films, you know, but don't I, let that stop you from seeing this. No. Film. And I think it's actually doing pretty decent box office. Wise, yeah. So. I think people, the, and the word of mouth is great on it. Yeah, and exactly. so, um, I want to see it get every accolade it can get. It could possibly be the best film of 2019. Absolutely. In in my point of view. Um, next one I have not got to see, and I'm I'm not a fan of Ryan Johnson for what he did to The Last Jedi. <laughs> you know, I'm Yeah, you gotta learn to forgive, my friend. I know, but but <laughs> I, but one man is not a man is not or or a filmmaker, I should say, male or female, whatever, um, is not one film. Yes, they have a body of work, and so yeah, we're talking I about Ryan open, Johnson. I keep an open mind about things, and uh, yeah, we're talking about Knives Out. I have not seen it. The wife has seen it. You have seen it. Yeah, um, she enjoyed it, and you're going to tell us. No, I loved it, and it's sitting in my top ten now. Um, you know, there's still some great films coming out, but it is up there for me because it takes the whole who done it and flips it on its head. Like it really kind of subverts what you were expecting out of a who done it. He's good at that subverting and... expectations. Kill Luke Skywalker. <laughs> what? But anyway, this is in a good way. So yeah. no, and <laughs> from, from what I hear, yes, the the performances are great. The cast is stellar. I mean, yeah, you, it's, it's you've got Daniel Craig, and he plays a Southern fried, <laughs> you know, uh, detective. Basically, I'm which... trying to think what was the film that he he had the accent in that he played in uh, is a few a few years ago it was actually i think it was i want to say it was filmed here or in georgia possibly you know you have to give him a little more than that bud <laughs> he had i think there were some bank robbers or something lucky oh, Lo- it- yeah the soderberg film uh, yeah, logan, yeah. logan lucky yeah lucky Lo- or something logan like that lucky logan <laughs> sure yeah, okay. those two words are in the title. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my, my brain is, but yeah, he had that yeah. accent, and I, I, it, I, but this is a little more believable accent. Yeah, even though I did, I don't really believe his accent so much in Knives Out, but I don't think that should but deter you from seeing. He's the film. so good in this. If it wasn't a crowded year for Best Actor, he could be in there. Yeah, and and who knows? Maybe they they say he's supporting, but he's top billed on the credits, so I doubt they even call him supporting. And um, but, just as yeah. Oh, so I'm you sorry. no right. yeah I just kind of want to go through the cast you've got Jamie Lee Curtis you got Don Johnson you got Anna De Armas delivers and she's considered lead here she delivers an amazing performance here she's my dark horse that I want nominated for best actress for this she's so good in this she's so good and then uh, who else is in that you've got oh Chris Evans Captain America's in there he's great in this he's trying to play against type you know yeah. not goody goody yeah. I guess you but. got. Lakeith Stanfield, Did you, you oh. have Tony Collette, it's hilarious in wow. this. So no, it's a and you said and, Jamie Lee Curtis, yeah, right? Okay. Absolutely, and they all deliver. You know, it's like it's not too much that you have all these people, and it is kind of like yeah. Clue. They even make a little joke about it, um, and it, it, it the pacing is great. It moves along. It's fun. You're gonna smile and you're gonna have a great time watching this movie. So yeah, Excellent. definitely, definitely see it. Um, my little side note is we're recording this on the, on the Wednesday, December 4th, 2019. So um, they just dropped the bond, the 25th bond film, yeah. no time to die. They dropped the trailer and we saw that. Yeah. Um, which is cool because Anna de Armas is in the new bond as well. So yeah. it's kind of like Craig and her are working back to back together. Yeah. And, uh, and, and this and, looks like to be a good film and it's yeah. going to be definitely definitely his last outing as yeah that's what they say and uh so 
I, I'm, I'm a Bond fan, so yeah, bring it, bring it on. And uh, so Knives Out, I've got to get to the theater and see that. So that's on my list. Um, the next one on our list, uh, we just literally came from the theater seeing this. And I think at one point this had 100% Rotten Tomatoes rating. Um, I had a different experience. We're in the same theater watching it. I had a different experience, and it could have been some of the crowd there. Uh, which wasn't much, but yeah, we um, did have a lot of people talking throughout the throughout movie, the film, which can and, definitely distract you, and you know, and, and you know, it, but but we're talking about uh, Queen Slim, Queen Queen and, Queen and Slim, Queen and me. Slim, and for me, it started off um, strong. It did, like you, yeah, I agree because they they set up the characters briefly, but effectively, you yeah. know, you know who these people are by that, the end of the first scene, right? You know, that Daniel Kaluuya's character is a faithful man, a good person. And so, you know, that kind of sets that up. You, you know, that Jody Turner Smith's character is a defense attorney and she's very rigid. Yes. Very rigid. Especially and, towards him. and they basically come together on a blind date, a tender date. Yeah. Um, and then this horrific, you know, incident happens where, you know, they have to, in self-defense, they end up killing a cop. Yeah. Who and, is white. And so, you know, there's the, the racial dynamic of that. And, right. um, and that plays throughout the film and, and is in, integral to the, to the plot there. But then at a certain point, they bring in humor, which, which I was prepared for that. So I'm sorry I to guess, interrupt, but no, ahead, no, 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 you're fine. You're fine. And please chime in. Yeah. Um, but, it felt it, it took me completely out of the film. At first, I'm like, okay, because the mood was pretty steady, and and I know the film's got to change. Was, there was still a little bit of there was some humor in that opening scene though in the diner. So it, it you yeah, know, but it, it was but it wasn't to that there. level. And then I find myself laughing and and I'm like busting out laughing at certain things, and I'm like, and everybody in the theater was, and I'm like, it's it's weird because this is like you know serious and it's not, but. I, it was altogether. It is a serious film, and for me, yeah. I literally, I think I dozed off in like the middle part of it for a little bit. It has a little bit of pacing issues in the middle, You're and right. and it, but but it, I was just like kind of really pulled out of the movie by that the comedy that they dropped in there, and and, see, and I'll tell you why I was prepared okay, for this sure. because the writer, the screenwriter Lena Waithe, she won an Emmy for writing an episode on Aziz Ansari's uh, Netflix show, Master of None. Okay. So there's she is a comedy writer. So so I was prepared for it to have a little bit of that. But, well, you know, and for you it didn't work, but... And, and there were some that. other, like, laugh-out moments in there, but, you know, some things that were predictable, some things that, you know we know how films are made. We've been on set and we've been behind the camera in front of the, you know, and everywhere else. And so we know how films are put together and locations are supposed to be. And like our hometown, the Savannah was in there and I don't think they really filmed here, but you know, it's hard to tell what was where, but, um, no, it filmed I, in Ohio, they, Louisiana. Most of it, I believe was new Orleans. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine. You know, there's movie magic and we, we get that, but, um, I don't know. It just, I get to the way I look at the film overall, you have a strong beginning and a very strong ending. Yeah. And I wish that they could have cleaned up the middle of it, tightened it up, tightened it, it up. And I think it could have been totally fantastic. Right. The runtime was like two hours, over two hours. Yeah. So and it, it could have been tightened up two hours. And, yeah. and you know, I just, in the middle of it, like I said, I literally kind of dozed off a little bit and, but I didn't. I didn't really miss much. But um, I just, it just. It, after I got pulled out of the film, it was hard for me to get back into, it, and I was trying really hard to stay with it. And I mean, I I can get when films do that, but this particular how it was put together, the editing or whatever, for me, it was off putting. Now, you had a totally different experience. So, well, well yeah. I mean, or, I I thought the script was pretty strong. I agree with you that it drags in the middle. Yeah. Um. And but I. I thought there were a lot of great poignant moments, some great dialogue. Um, a lot of it is inner dialogue. Uh, they, there's a great, there's, I, I like the style the director used. Uh, I believe her name is Melina Matsukis. I forgive me if I said that wrong. Yeah. But you know, where they're talking, but they're not like you, you hear it, the talking over just, you know, blank 
face, you know, where they're not actually visually right, right. talking. So there were some cool moments like that. I think the strength here is in the two perform lead performances, Daniel Kaluuya and uh, Jody Turner Smith, I believe is her name. Um, I could definitely see both of them getting nominated. I thought they were both really strong performances. Um, mm -hmm. I think this, as I said, the script is pretty good. I liked some of the supporting um, performances. I love Bokeem Woodbine. He played uh, the the lady's uncle, uh, oh, yeah. the pimp. <laughs> <laughs> and, and those moments were funny. Don't get me wrong, but it was just pacing for me. I don't know. Something happened there, and it just. I will say I don't like, and I I know they're trying to make a point here, but I did not like how every white cop, male and female, were portrayed as basically pieces of shit. Yeah, and and there were people in the audience that were laughing. That when, bothered me when yeah. yeah when the when the white when the white cop is shot, there's a shot of like him laying there dead, and there were two people laughing at it, and that kind of hurt a little bit. It was yeah. like oh god, like and I understand like I'll never know what it's like to be a black person. Yeah, but I still wouldn't laugh at somebody lying dead. Right, you know, no matter so, who they are. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of bothered me, but. I I do think it's a powerful film. I think it will resonate with certain, you know, certain um There was crowds, a late, lady but. sitting like like literally in front of you and she was like belching out loud during the film, which is like that was strange. I don't, I don't I've never been in a theater where somebody's doing that. That was I'm strange. Like, Not only did she have no respect for the people around her, she had no respect for herself. herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's what I said later and I'm yeah. like and th maybe that's part of what pulled me out of it too. I wasn't yeah. trying to watch the audience. I was really trying to watch the film and I was enjoying it. And that's the film. why I try to go to films when nobody else is in there. I don't yeah. like big crowds. And there wasn't a big crowd in there for yeah, this there was, one. There were probably I mean, about a, 20. I mean, that's, was that's it that deep. many? Yeah, that's yeah I guess. Yeah. And, and, um, you know, I know, I, I know it's, it's a film about, I get the whole, it, and this is all, of course, spoilers, but like there's a kid in there that, that, you know, they become like folk heroes to him and, you yeah. know, like resistance leaders or something and, right. and, and fighting the power. And I get, I, I understand that And this kid and he goes up there and he shoots the cop and that's what we're not expecting. It's a, yeah. he's a, a, a young African-American kid and this African-American cop, which is good, you know, that they showed that they showed the other side of it. And, you know, it, and, and that gentleman, um, and the cop, he, a policeman, he, he's like, I don't want you to get hurt. He's like, please just go home. I don't want to have right. to arrest he's, you. He's doing everything he can perfectly yes. to de-escalate. And, and yet, it's good that they showed that, that, you know, the all, all, all policemen are not evil. They're not all corrupt and everything. Yes, there are issues. And well, they only you know, showed the black cops in a positive light. I will say that. Yeah. So, it's, so, I mean, and, and I, and, you know, we're two white guys talking about a film that's, you know, not really told from our perspective whatsoever. No, so. but I don't think that's that matters here. It's a human experience. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's a minute, the human experience. I, I agree with you on that. And, uh, but, um, this film I really had been looking forward to. I'd been saying, ooh, Academy Award. And, you know, so, I had high hopes. Yeah. And, uh, were your hopes a little diminished or I think so. I don't think it's a best picture worthy. I don't either. I could see I don't think it makes my top ten even, which kind of saddens me because I think it, it had potential. I mean, for the last the last that last part of it yeah. was powerful where, you know, she dies and gets shot on the runway and it's where he picks her up. I mean, that's yeah. so symbolic and I was like, Wow, you know, where was this kind of vigor? You know, there was no chase. There was nothing in the middle. They seemed to pretty well get along pretty good, you know, in the film. You know? Yeah, they got down to New Orleans awfully quick. <laughs> yeah, and unscathed, <laughs> and, <yeah>. mostly. <laughs> and um, her character changed pretty quick, you know. Yeah, I want to say uh, that about, like, the dynamic between quick. the two characters, which I enjoyed, was they really are just, like, strangers that meet. It's, it's, and Completely, it, There yeah. are some definitely similarities to Bonnie and Clyde, not entirely. Right. But they does start off with two strangers that don't know each other, and they don't, they end up not liking each other. Right. And if it it's wasn't not... for this horrible experience that they went through, they wouldn't be together. But their relationship grows, and they do, of course, become, you know, lovers. Right. And so I did like that dynamic and where that went. Um, yeah. But yeah. And, and, and it was juxtaposition of the kid getting 
shot or shooting the policeman when he does and he walks away and then he actually right, shoots him. that was edited together with, yeah with yeah that was good scene, yeah. yeah going back and forth and in, in the intensity of the, the love scene and then the intensity of what that kid was feeling and the cop was the policeman was feeling and so yeah that i mean that all worked well into the in, all the way to the end of the film and, and the end of the film was incredible i mean you know, Oscar kind of caliber stuff, but just not enough throughout the film for me I personally. I get it. Yeah. Cool. Um, we've got a couple more and this next one, Oh, the next two are actually, well, one is in the theater. The last one we're going to talk about, but well, they're well, both, they're limited. both Netflix, but they're both Netflix. That you can yeah. go watch right now on Netflix. And yeah. I have not seen this and it is on my queue to watch. I just haven't had time to watch it, but my name is Dolomite. My what name is Murphy? Dolomite. I had a smile on my face the whole time watching this, and it's mainly yes. because of Eddie Murphy and seeing him again. This is what we've been missing for right. 20, 25 years. We've right. not seen him in this mode, and I think this is him making, you know, obviously he was in. He did a great job in Dreamgirls, and people thought that was going to be, what was that, 10 years ago? God, was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, was over 10 years ago, and that people thought that was going to be his comeback. And nothing really right. kind of just sputtered out. I think there was a bomb or two after that that kind of hurt him. But th- I think this is going to jumpstart him mm-hmm. again because we're going to see. I know they're filming Coming to America too, Which they've, I can't wait for. They've announced another Beverly Hills Cop. So we're, It's going to be interesting, the Beverly Hills Cop. That, yeah. I, don't, I don't know how that's going to go. The last one was okay. Yeah. Um, you know, but, but, but this, I don't know. When I, you see this, you'll see what I'm saying. It's like right. he is... He's back in that you mode. Feel like he's got that. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's got his mojo back. Right, and, and like, the, and I think it's. I don't know if it's quite good enough to be nominated for best actor, but there's word that he could. There's buzz around this for it. So, and I don't think it's a best picture or anything, but it's a right. fun movie. It's funny, and it's uh, and it's a movie about filmmaking too, and fall and the American so, dream. Right. So it's he really does a great job. It's exciting to see him. So do, it's it's almost a. It's a super comedic look at um, what's the DiCaprio in a Pitt film? What's it called? Oh, Once, Once upon, upon a time in Hollywood. Hollywood. You know, it, it, they're not at all alike, but it's no. like I'm just saying, like, well, this is same this time is, period. Though. But they're talking about Hollywood, and you see behind the scenes. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. no, it's, it's. I haven't seen it yet. I'm go, it, I'm definitely going to see man, it, yeah. and uh, I may check it out tonight. Um, the next one is The Irishman, right? Which, and, We'll end on here. We may, right. you know, touch on some things so, that are next, but but this is our our last film of this podcast, The Irishman, also on Netflix right now. Um, I think we're both somewhat underwhelmed by it. Yeah, is, is I, that fair I kinda, to say? Um, the wife got through about the first twenty minutes of it, and then she she's like, "I'm going to take a break," and I think she's getting something to eat or whatever, or watching on Netflix, and then I said, "Yeah, I was holding it for." Her. She's like, "You can keep watching it. I'm I'm done with it." and and um, and to be fair, it's, she's probably not the demographic this is going to. It's probably it's, not. It's you know, more, uh, you know, me. I love you. <laughs> Scorsese, even though he doesn't like Marvel and you know all the controversies of what he said, and he's walked some of that back. And um, I know that people have been kind of taunting him with their cell phones, watching the Irishman on it because he had no idea that you know you have the four picture four weeks that the picture the the film has to be in theaters. As part of this Netflix deal, you yeah. know, and well, then, too. and it's only select theaters at best. Yeah. And, um, and then, then it runs simultaneously on Netflix, of course, where you can stream it on any device, you know, like Netflix. Yeah. And the whole Netflix. reason to put it out in theaters is just so it can be awesome. And that's, and it, that's the, how he kind of, he, he said that he said he had no idea that, you know, people watch it on their phones. He's like, please don't watch it on your phone. Please, 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 please go to a theater and see it. Well, it's not, or, or watch it at home. Yeah, and break it up if you have to the, take a break. Yeah, the issue it is, is long. three. Realizing. It's three and a half hours, hours long, long, and I think everybody knows that by now. But I think he he was so. I guess he's so used to being in the Oscar talk, right? That maybe he really just wanted this to be a film. And I don't. I, I don't. I can think, understand I, I hope how that, he made it. I hope in the, that. Sorry. That Scorsese doesn't like that he's not driven by accolades, but this really would have been much better had it been a four part limited series. Don't you agree? I yeah. Mean, and that, it would have worked so much better. And like, and I actually saw somebody posted like here, here's how to watch it in four segments. And it was like, that's awesome. It was perfect. But 
I think the strengths of this film, though, are the performances, the especially De, uh, De Niro, Pacino, and Pesci. They, you know, and there's some. Oh my gosh! And the de aging works for me. I know it, some people it said did. it. There, there's, there's a parts. couple of moments that don't look quite right, right. and his the blue eyes kind of freak you out because you don't now, think of De Niro with blue eyes, but he's playing an Irishman, so kind of had this, to do that. Saying saying this about the Irishman, Pacino just made it for me. And De Niro yeah. just he he's that steady character through it all and you need that for the story and he's De Niro is great you know he he doesn't have to do anything or prove anything just like Pesci right. doesn't have to do anything but it's great to see Pesci in action come out of retirement yeah, yeah and and in the de-aging like I said for me on the most part worked yeah and um but to but for me it was Pacino when he was playing Jimmy Hoffa yeah. and he just he does Pacino as Hoffa and and that's <laughs> I loved it every time he was on the screen I was focused on his character more than De Niro's. Yeah. And, you know, De Niro, but that's the nature also of De Niro's character that he was kind of, you know, steady. He was the well, he's, guy, but he had a conscience. Right. He's the, he's, yeah. he's Hoffa's bodyguard. So right. he has to be a little bit subservient. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and he was like a best friend to Hoffa in this. Right. And, you know, I don't know how true all these events are. Well, or I've whatever. done some reading about it and there's this, it's really just speculation. It's based on a novel called, uh, I heard you paint houses, which is, Right. You know, oh, that's his, one of the first lines or early right. in the thing. He says, oh, hey, which is code do, for, houses? you know, killing people. I know and, that now. <laughs> well, know. but then there's a dispute that like nobody's ever heard that before and that this guy just made that up. But <laughs> but from what <laughs> I've read and, and then he's unreliable. I mean, he's a he's a mobster and he could just be like wanting to get glory in his last days. Because, could be. Yeah. So there's a lot of speculation. Yeah, about there's a lot. There's how a, much of this is actually true. But it's it's a film though, you know. It's it doesn't have to be true. It's just it's an entertaining film, and it is good. It is not it's not a piece of trash. It's not no. terrible. It's it's very good filmmaking. It's better than most films this year. Yes, it's just my knock on it is it's how just, long it is. It shouldn't. It just it re, and it feels that long. Some people said you could chop 30, 40 minutes out the middle and you'd be oh fine. My God, at least I felt yeah. that about Queen and Slim also, but on a different level. But you know, and I with going yeah with irishman it also it's like when it and when it pops up and it's like i loved that i did kind of oh, like yeah. the little like killed you know shot three times in the head it's like everybody it's like funny, all know? these people it's like okay they get murdered later on i have a feeling scorsese probably filmed all those scenes and they just had to cut him out because he was already over three hours long and they're know? like because i think you don't get enough kytel um, yeah, that's true. You don't get enough. There has been some some uproar about Anna Paquin and her, you know, not ha like saying only seven words in the movie. Well, but that's kind of the point of her character. Her character because was she's scared of her father. She has no relationship with her father and doesn't talk to her father. Yeah. So that's kind of the point of that character to begin with. So it's like that backlash is kind of you know. A little unfounded. I think that you know that's that's her character. But you know, I would. I mean, if De Niro gets a nomination, that would be wonderful because this is the easily the best thing he's done. Oh Lord, in twenty five years, yeah, probably yeah. since Heat. Po yeah, very possibly. You and, know, and 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 Pesci, you know, is great. Um, yeah. But for me, Pacino. No, oh I my gosh, it. I don't. I you know I can't remember the last good uh, really good thing I've seen Pacino in. He doesn't do much, but he's done some like done H HBO movies and miniseries. Yeah. He played like Phil Spector and like he's done he a did, couple of right. stuff yeah. where he, you know that that were pretty good. But, um, but yeah, I think De Niro's a lock. I think in the best lead actor category, you've got three locks and Joaquin Phoenix, Joker, for Joker, yeah, and then you got De Niro and Irishman, and you got DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think those three guys are locked in. Right. Um, but and then I hope Pacino's locked. I, if you're gonna make yeah. me pick between Pacino and Pesci, I Pacino, would pick Pacino. Definitely. But I hope both of them get nominations because that those three guys, feelings. those are those are the strengths of this film. Oh, definitely. And definitely. I could see it getting a visual effects just for the that. Yeah. Whole if you process had a if you had a different crew or different actors in those roles, right. And that's the Nobody fun of the movie. Watched it. It's, the star power pulls you right. in, and it's like a gravitational force that kind of keeps you there, even when you stop and you you, you pause it and you go to the bathroom, <laughs> and right. then you go, you know, take the kids to school and then come back or whatever, <laughs> you know, because it's a long film. Well, I think it's the draw and why people are really 
you know, really, you know, talking up this film is because it is Scorsese reuniting with De Niro and and yeah. Pesci and doing like what they do best, kind of thing. And it may not ever happen again. P- Pesci doesn't even want to act anymore. Right. Scorsese had to talk him out of retirement to do this. Scorsese's never worked with Pacino, so that was cool to see. Yeah. So you know, and that's that's why I think this it's getting so much attention. Um, I think it's a little overrated. I'm, Don't, but that doesn't yeah. mean I didn't like it. I still I, like most to, of it. I'm afraid to say anything bad in front of De Niro, Pacino, <laughs> Pacino, <laughs> um, Pacino. I'm putting their names together now. Um, yeah. Pacino, um, Pacino, no, Pacino, and um, Joe Pesci because they'll all break my legs and everything else. <laughs> so they just seem like total badasses well, that's, in this film. Yeah, and, well, you know, I know that's the characters, and but they're another such string, great actors. Another string, and it helps too. Is the the hair and makeup was you know was really was spot on. Was really well. Maybe done, maybe so. it should get something for that. You know, a no, I could see too. that. Yeah. I mean, I could. They captured the period time periods when they did the, all the flashbacks. I thought they did that well yeah. and set design, everything. You know, just everything was on point with this. It just wasn't it wasn't the great masterpiece maybe i was hoping it to be because we we had big it's on our our top films or or not top films necessarily or may or may not be but on our like hundred films that we previewed for the whole year the irishman you're like don't forget about the irishman and Mm -hmm. i didn't know anything about it you know back then i had to look it up and so to see it you know i i think it's been a learning experience and eye-opening for scorsese and how films after he said all the stuff about Marvel and and those films and then walk that back and now he's he's seen um you know how the Irishman and, and how technology now is consumed. It's it's an interesting It's changing. It's changing it, it, because the way we view you know, movies are changing. Right. You know, people are watching more stuff on their devices than than they are. People have cut some people have a lot of people have cut the cord. They have five or six streaming services and they're going bankrupt in the process and loving it. Yeah, right. <laughs> but uh yeah, Irishman very good but just a little too long and it was it was very it was it was almost to the extent of um I felt it was a little like fan service to an extent in a way I felt like he just overindulged well it's a little self-indulgent maybe yeah self-indulgent that's what I'm, I'm reaching I don't for. think it was necessarily fan service I think it was Scorsese service <laughs> well that's I, yeah that's th- thank you for helping me phrase it that's kind of what I was trying to get at I couldn't find the words and uh yeah um so what's coming up as we roll towards the end of the episode. Yeah, we won't go too far into it. We'll just like, I think there's some more that, you know, that are coming up that people should keep an eye out for. We've got 1917, the war epic from Sam Mendes. Looks awesome. Which will be cool because it's supposedly shot this one long tracking shot for two wow. hours. That is Obviously, be... they didn't do a two hour long shot. Right. There's going to be some creative editing there. But still, the idea is pretty cool that it's one long tracking shot for two hours in a war film. So yeah. that'll be cool. You've got Greta Gerwig's Little Women um, coming out. I think that's going to be a strong contender. Mm-hmm. You know, I love my girl, Saoirse Ronan. Yeah. Uh, Florence Pugh's also in that. She could be uh, getting a lot of buzz for that. Uh, Which she needs a nomination for Midsommar. Like she really should be yes. up for Best Actress. You, for that. you dragged me to that film, and I'm glad you did. It was it was not something I would have normally gone and seen. No. And and yeah, that one's not going easy. out of my top ten. That's it's in my top. Probably 10 not this going year. out of my top ten, and that's uh, so, uh, kind of surprising for me. But mm-hmm. so. Anyway, we'll we've also here. got Just Mercy, Jamie Fox, and Michael B. Jordan. Looks um, very good. I think that it. It's going to be powerful, but it's also kind of a story we've seen before. Dead Man Walking. You've got Dead Man Walking. You've got The Hurricane with Denzel Washington. It's got that same kind of formula. It's so weird because I I said this, uh, we weren't maybe recording when I said this, but when I first saw it, I didn't realize that was Jamie Foxx. I was like, oh, it's Denzel. And I don't know why I just went right to Denzel, but maybe it's because (laughs) Because of The the Hurricane. hurricane. And um, but then I caught myself, and so that could be good. It also has uh, Captain Marvel in it, Brie Larson's in it. Um, So. It, it it could be good, but I think that the knock on it is probably going to be it's not that original because we've right. seen movies like it before. Uh, and then we've also got Marriage Story um, comes out this weekend and, on and, Netflix. And who's that? That's with Scar- Scarlett Johansson and Adam Driver. It's a Noah Baumbach film. Uh, uh, it's about this this couple that's going through a divorce. You know, it doesn't sound too fun, but evidently these two lead performances by Johansson and Driver 
are are really well done. Driver seems like he might be the fourth lock from all the talk for that. Wow. So we'll see. It's a it's a it's a comes out this weekend, so we'll we'll have uh, news on that here soon. And then uh, the last one I think might sneak in there is uh, Clint Eastwood's Richard Jewell about the Atlanta bombing, the 1996. Uh, I want to see that. Yeah, you know, I I remember that whole situation, but I don't. Yeah. You know, it'd be nice to kind of. It's kind of nice to go back to that history, and you know, and, and you you made a very important point. You said, yeah, it, we were talking about what films could be Oscar worthy, and you said, yeah, and then East. Eastwood just decides to drop a film. He does, his... he seems to do this like he sneaks yeah. in at the last moment and like and gives us a film that nobody even knew was coming and sneaks in and like the And they're usually pretty good. Yeah, they are. The best example of that is American Sniper and uh, Yeah. But I I think Richard Jewell could surprise some people. It is about the media and and you know, fake news I guess in a way, which um, is a thing, uh, you know. So, so, or you know, you can fake videos even now, so you And know, then the, the guy, and, I think his name's Paul Walter Hauser who plays Richard Jewell. I think he, this is kind of a breakout moment for him. Could be, yeah. Um so I'm definitely interested in seeing that. So I think those are your your biggest contenders that still haven't come out come out yet. So. Um I, this is probably on your list. I think we probably talked about it on a previous episode, but just just to remind everyone listening and especially myself, Honey Boy, what did you saw that? Yeah. The SCAD Film Festival and yeah. and I was excited to see that. I I missed it if it even came out in theaters here. I missed it. Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to go to the film festival. But uh what were your thoughts on that? Because I feel like that could be the breakout, you know, screenplay or yeah, actor that's where I for... see it. I think Shia LaBeouf could be could have two nominations uh, for screenplay and then supporting actor. I don't see it getting much other than that. Yeah. I think it is a great film. Let's see. I think I have it right now as my number thirteen. So I mean, that's that's up there. That's pretty good. Um, but I just I I think it's going to be on the outside looking right. in for the bigger awards. But I think screenplay and supporting actor are definitely within Shia LaBeouf's reach. So, and and that would be good to see for him, you know. And yeah. uh, he's really like he did Peanut Butter Falcon, which he filmed down here yeah. in Savannah, and he got into the trouble with the police. And but and he recently won an award for, I think it was for Honey Boy. I'm not sure. And he he credited our police department down here for. Um, helping him turn his life around, you know, that experience. And, you know, he apologized for that. And he, and I really, in, in peanut butter Falcon was really good. It, it was more than just a Huck Finn story. As I said, originally, you know, it's, yeah, I was just trying to, it was definitely a, a feel good movie. It was a feel good yeah. film. And the gentleman that's in that could possibly get a nomination. I, I don't see it because he's the lead and it's just too too competitive this year. Yeah, so. it's, it's crazy competitive. I mean, just the amount of films we're talking about on this episode of the podcast is, is amazing because, I mean, yeah, they are dropping left and right. The, the only, like, big thing, there, there's a few things, but from the geeky side, there's Star Wars and, like, less than 20 oh, days. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't even mention that because I'm talking about what I think is going to be best picture yeah, caliber, and, but yeah, we've obviously we've got Rise of Skywalker coming. Which, so. if it does a billion, will be the tenth billion dollar movie this year for yeah. which is enjoy this year because this may never happen again. You know, and this, <laughs> you know, if a film doesn't make a billion dollars, trust pretty, me, that's not the new threshold. Pretty good way to end the decade. You know? Yeah, yeah. So you know, um, but uh, thank you very much for, for listening to this episode. We want to hear what you got to say about that. Uh, let us know, Geek Home World on Facebook, Geek Home World at, on Twitter. And, yeah, uh, and don't forget, we're going to come at you with the best of the decades here in the new year. And we'll yeah. also do a best of this year. We'll do an Oscar preview, an Oscar yeah. nomination prediction, maybe. We've we'll, yep. got and, some stuff coming down and, the pipe. And you always blog for us around Oscar time. So yeah. and they're always very well received. So appreciate uh, it. we got a lot a lot of things, um, a lot of good stuff coming to the podcast. And and thank you all for listening. We really appreciate you. Uh, GeekHomeWorld.Libson.com. We're on iTunes or Apple Podcasts as a uh, geek home world that we're geek home world so we're everywhere anyway um thank you for listening and i know this might be a little bit long episode but it's important and it's great to to touch base with everybody so i'm ed susevich and joined with uh here with uh scott shriver thank you scott again you bet. absolutely and uh we'll talk to you guys soon thanks thanks for listening to another episode of the geek home world 
with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow and interact with us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes and leave a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Home World.